Welcome to Faces of the Forgotten on a beautiful sunny day in Skokie, Illinois. We are visiting the Memorial Park Cemetery. Uh, this is a cemetery that was uh, established in 1913. Still old, but not as old as some of the ones we've been looking at. And we are in. So right now I'm looking for Alan Curtis who was an actor in Hollywood. He died at 43, young, kidney operation. Uh, but I'm just kind of wandering aimlessly right now. I know the section, but I'll turn it back on if, uh, if I find him. So I have been looking back and forth. I got the location. I went to the office of the cemetery, and I've been out here yeah, looking, going in circles, and now, now I know why. I'm looking, was looking for Alan Curtis. Well, that's his screen name. His real name was Harry Uberoth. And uh, thankfully on Find a Grave, there was a picture of the general area with this tree, and that's the only way I would have found it because it is completely, there's three graves here, completely overgrown. So I think this was the father, Otto. I'm going to pull some of this away. He was a private. This is his father, I guess. Uh, Otto was private Illinois, a uh, private company K-159 Infantry. World War I. Uh, he was born in 1895 and he died in 53. So they lived to be 58 years old. What's interesting is uh, 53 is the same year that uh, Alan Curtis, we'll go by his screen name, was, the, uh, he died um, in after post-operative kidney uh, operation. You know, his grave is not here. Well, his grave is here, I think, but his, his tombstone is not here. This is... Adelie Uberoth. Uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Um, 1870 to 1935. Well, maybe this is him, but no, the dates don't match up. Chris H. Uberoth. Uber 1856 to 1924. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know uh, what the deal is, but his. Uh, he, it says he's buried here with the family, and uh, well, hopefully it looks a little better once the landscapers come through with the lawnmower. Clear this out, but uh, you know what? I'm guessing he's right here because there's an open spot um, next to his dad. His dad died the same year. His dad died in uh, April. Alan Curtis died. Uh, Harry, his real name again, Harry Uberoth, died in um, February, late 1953. So his dad died before him in April, if that's his father, Otto. So no connection there because uh, uh, well, what's interesting, what's really interesting about Alan is uh, who he was married to, probably as interesting or more interesting, Priscilla Lawson, who was born in 1914 and she died in 58, the, uh, in the year before I was born. And Priscilla was famous for being the princess uh, on the famous show Flash Gordon. Uh, she was uh, she became a cult figure for generation of fans and uh, she be she was beautiful um, she won Miss Miami Beach and then went on to uh, go to Hollywood he was also married to Lona or Iona Massey and uh, another movie star she's actually buried in Arlington Cemetery she's originally from was originally from Budapest, Hungary, poverty-stricken family, and uh, 
She uh, was in the Zigfield Follies, uh, Milton Berle. She had a radio show called Top Secret. And uh, she, she had her own show also, the Leona or Iona Massey show. I don't remember her, but... Uh, so, uh, you know, Alan, Curtis, Harry, uh, Uberoth, I'm, I'm guessing he's buried here. Uh, sadly, he does not have a tombstone if he is here with his family. Uh, so we'll just have to, uh, it'll be a mystery. Well, this woman was very popular. Always loving and forever loved, Lucy. She was born in 1936, and she died in 2013 in May. Sparrows, your song, lilacs, your scent. Sun, your spirit. And it's an image of Lucy. How long have these things been here? I don't know if you can see with all the glare. I can't read. 10 20 10. Just by chance, I happened upon Elena's blog. It's a, a short, uh, simple blog, but it was kind of ironic to see this post that she made. Uh, it was four days before her death on October 16th of 2010, and she died on the 20th, and uh, talking about uh, the lullabies. She says, and I quote, a list of tracks that I have found helpful and soothing in putting to sleep a baby. Nicholas Frenzel. Uh, Nicholas died when he was only one. March 94. Spring of 94 and July, uh, died in the summer, July 3rd, 1995. We will never forget you, not even in a hundred years. Uh, somebody left a Batman car for Nicholas. Uh, Winnie the Pooh. This is a beautiful rabbit. I'm going to move this just to see, for now, I'll put it back, um, her name. Uh, this is Pearl, nickname Pearl Mary, Bulldog, Bulldog, or Bulldog, Lippert, March 12th, 1915 to February 14, 2008. Uh, First most cherished Valentine. Our first most cherished Valentine. And uh, it says, We love you, Mama. And there is a picture of Mary, nicknamed Pearl. There, that's better. This is the grave of Rodolfo. Guajardo. He was uh, in the Marine Corps. August 24th, 1975, and he died on May 10th, 1997. 97, what would that be? Um, 
22 years old. I take it he might have been killed in action. We'll have to do a little research on this. But uh, people are visiting him. And uh, thank you for your service, Rodolfo. I hope you're resting in peace. A woman fond of sailing Beitler. This is Deborah Joy. Oh, let's see, Gottlieb. She died in 2011, born in 55. See ya. Visiting the grave of Robert Reed, who was famous for being uh, playing the father. Look at this. Tombstones are... Uh, when they were buried in 1940, the tree was probably a sapling or a weed. A sapling or a small tree, actually, because this... Well, maybe not even a sapling. This tree's got to be a, over 100 years old. And uh, it's really interesting how it just uh, grew around and has enveloped these monuments. Anyway, back to Robert Reed. Robert Reed was the father on the Brady Bunch. Here's the story um, of a man named Brady. Anyway, we'll cut with the singing. Robert Reed, there he there's his marker. Looks like someone is, has uh, paid respects. Uh, 1932, he was born, and he died in 92. He, uh, he was actually, he got his start as a Shakespearean actor, very serious, and he didn't even want to be on the, the Brady Bunch. I mean, he did it, but he was not really proud of that role in that show, although they had a lot of fun. And the Brady Bunch kids, at the uh, actors and actresses, they, uh, or I should say actors, they're all actors, um, they had, he was like a father figure to them, uh, kind of like the Andy Griffith show, where Andy was uh, Andy Griffith to Opie, uh, Ron Howard. Anyway, uh, he had a lot of great accomplishments. Of course, the Brady Bunch was a ma mega hit show for several years. And uh, the thing was that he was, uh, he was married in the mid-50s, had a daughter, divorced in 1959, and shortly after or then, who knows, he realized that he was gay. And uh, again, it, in those days, a lot of people didn't talk about it. There was a lot of uh, bigotry on that, and he kept it secret. Although the cast of the ba Brady Bunch and some of the crew, they all knew it. They loved him. It wasn't an issue. And, uh, but sadly, uh, in 92, uh, it was originally reported that he died of cancer, but it, the real story is he had HIV, he had AIDS, so he was uh, a victim of that but a uh, great uh, show great life handsome guy uh, hopefully he's resting in peace next we're going to visit the grave of a very famous football player from chicago named sid luckman hall of famer that's in the olden days chicago bears um, he was born in Brooklyn, New York, grew up on the streets, the cobblestone streets, as he would say. And he, uh, uh, here's, the, uh, here's the stones again. Another gentleman, Mickey Whitman. 
Mickey Whitman died in 81. Father, son, and brother. So, uh, Sid Luckman, here's Sid Luckman's grave. Uh, someone left a, uh, a penny. Beloved husband, father, and grandfather, Sid Luckman, November 21st, 1916, July 5th, 1998. I had it all. I did it all. I loved it all. And his uh, wife, Estelle, died in 81, well before him. You know, uh, that really sums it up, that statement that's made there at the bottom. Um, as I was saying, he grew up in the, uh, the streets, and there they played stickball and football on a very narrow uh, cobblestone street. Uh, football, of course, they played two-hand touch. And he would say that the dinner would get cold when his mom would call him and his family for dinner because they played morning till night every day. And his, his heroes, his hero was Babe Ruth and Joe DiMaggio. And he only hoped that he could make the high school team and he only hoped that, uh, um, he only hoped that he could be a glimmer of the, the players they were. He, it was a dream. And uh, little did he know I mean, and as he said in his wildest dreams that what came true, I mean, he went on a run in the, I think the final game against the Washington Redskins, they won 78 to nothing. They were called the Monsters of the Midway. He's the guy, Sid Luckman is the guy who invented the T formation. So like Charles Comiskey before him or he, uh, as an innovator of the sport, their sport, uh, this guy, this Sid guy really, Sid Luckman really contributed a lot to this world. So, uh, hopefully he's resting in peace, Sid Luckman. So one of the, uh, graves I'm looking for, actually a couple, um, father and daughter, uh, kind of the centerpiece of what I really wanted to uh, see today was, uh, well, the father's name is Irv Kupsenet, with a K, K-U-P. He was famous for a show in Chicago called Cups, um, and had a, he was a columnist for the uh, Chicago Sun-Times, famous guy, gossip columnist about the rich and famous, and he had a talk show Pretty well-known guy, pretty connected, really good guy. Uh, I think his wife's name was Essie. And they had a daughter na uh, named Karen, Karen Cupsonet, And her nickname was Cookie. And I guess her mom got her, uh, wanted her to uh, study or get connected with the uh, Hollywood scene, get into movies. She was very beautiful. And they, uh, so that happened. And uh, she uh, moved out to LA. She had a brief acting career in the uh, early 1960s. And the, uh, the, the big picture here is it's, it's really a cold case. It's really an interesting cold case. Uh, she was murdered eight days after the assassination of JFK, and they say there's a connection to the mob, to the JFK assassination. And it's, uh, it's an intriguing story. And so she, she was in shows like Perry Mason, and uh, I, actually it was Jerry Lewis that I think the mother and the father knew Jerry Lewis. They did a lot of charitable work, so Jerry's kids, that, I th I'm pretty sure that was the connection. And anyway, Jerry gave her uh, a role in a film called The Ladies' Man, and she appeared in a bit part with a bunch of young ladies uh, in a Hollywood boarding house. 
so that was in 1962 and then she started starring in you know stuff like uh, the Donna Reed show and wide country going my way Death Valley days so she was uh, I know it's around here she was really getting, you know, she was a rising star. And uh, so she uh, she had a problem with uh, diet pills. She was getting, they say she was abusing uh, the diet pills and, you know, already having some problems. Uh, I, understand, I guess she had an illegal abortion in 63 and this was with a uh, actor, I think he's still alive, named uh, Prine. I, I don't know his first name. P-R-I-N-E. And anyway, uh, they, they had a falling out, or he pretty much dumped her, I think. And uh, she, uh, you know, all of a sudden, they... She was having dinner with the guy, uh, the family, the husband and wife um, from Lost in Space, um, Mark Goddard and uh, his wife. And they were at their house in Beverly Hills. And uh, she was due there at 6.30 p.m. She was late. She was out of sorts. She was uh, twitchy and mumbling and just acting really strangely and they were really worried about her and they were kind of putting it together with the was it the pills what was going on so anyway she uh, she left uh, went back home and these two guys met up with her or maybe it was uh, maybe it was oh it was Andrew Prime and uh, Maybe it was, I think it was two guys that knew Prime. They were buddies. Anyway, the, the story goes that they were with her. They were the last people to see her. They were at her house watching, I don't know, one of the shows on TV. And uh, here again, this uh, the Jewish... I saw this on... I know I mentioned this before. On, this is just beautiful on, on Schindler's list uh, the movie where uh, the stones are placed out of respect it's just really cool really amazing it always really touches me when I see this anyway getting back to the story they um, so there's with these two guys and they were friends of Andrew Prine and uh, they leave at like eight or nine o'clock and uh, they go back to his, so the th go back to his house and the three of, the, they left her and the three of those guys were hanging out till like three in the morning, again, watching TV. And then uh, Goddard, you know, meanwhile, I think it was a day or two later, they're not hearing from her. They're like putting two and two together. So they go to her house and they find her on the sofa naked and murdered, dead. So, uh, crazy. So the first, you know, is obviously the autopsy took place and there was a broken, um, her neck, her throat, there's a little bone in there, I don't know what it's called. Anyway, they, that was broken. So like, okay, she was, she was strangled or choked to death and raped. And that's the big uh, thing we're gonna talk about because I have an idea here. So it's basically, um, you know, and then it's the connection with the, um, with the Kennedy assassination. Uh, there was, there was, they couldn't find the killer. Their prime was a suspect. You know, I think these two guys raped and killed her because, oh, that's what it was. She sent, she had sent prime um, a letter kind of like a ransom guy, a kidnapper would write with cut out letters and it was really nasty. And she said, oh, I got one of those too. It was proved later she wrote it or she put it together because her fingerprints were found on the scotch tape, right? So anyway, the thought was this Prime guy, Andrew Prime, he's still alive today, like I said, that he 
was, you know, trying to get rid of her. So he had these two guys, two buddies, you know, kill her. And in the process, beautiful girl, let's, you know, rape her. So anyway, there's a connection to the Kennedy assassination. Boy, I know it's, I know it's right here. I've got to be close. Um, in that, there was a phone call made, literally, from that area where she lived, Cookie Cupsonet, to a radio station or to a news station, somebody, I think it was five days before the assassination, warning of the assassination. And the conspiracy theory goes that she knew about it from the mob, and the mob, oh, here it is, here it is, the mob put the hit on her. And uh, cups in it. Here we go. And the mob put the hit on her. Okay, so here, here we have uh, Cookie. Uh, we have cherished wife, mother, grandmother, and great grandmother. This is Essie. That's the mom. She, uh, December 7th, 14, born. She died in 2001 and it says patron of the arts. And then the famous father, Irv, he's really famous around these parts. Mr. Chicago, he died in uh, November 10th, 2003. Irv Kuppesen, yeah, he was a great guy. So, you know, back to Cookie. So, you know, I started, I was reading the story and I'm like, I'm like, you know what? All right, so let's see here. Pull some of these weeds away. All right, so she was killed. She was murdered on November 28th, 1963. I was four years old. So that's, that's uh, <laughs> that goes back a long time because I'm an old guy. Anyway, um, here's the deal, right? DNA. Let's talk. Let's think about this. So, what's it called? Mito mit mitochondrial DNA. That's like the advanced DNA. And um, you know, her corpse is here, right? Uh, it's decomposed. It's buried. But you know, cold case. These guys are these guys are still alive. I know Andrew Prine is, and these other two guys, but. What an easy case to solve. Like, couldn't they exhume her and do a... I know DNA lasts for hundreds of years, if not thousands. I think the oldest DNA recovered was from some Neanderthal, whatever. 7,000 years successfully recovered DNA. So, what, what if... Why not exhume her? You know, I... You know, we really respect the grave. We don't want to do this, but to catch the killers, this is done all the time. It's happening right now in Rexburg, Idaho, with that Lori Vallow, Chad Daybell case where, uh, anyway, uh, exhume the body, do the rape test kit. There's got to be semen or something, cellular DNA. You find it, bam. Even if those guys, uh, those two dirt bags are dead if if they're the killers you know we have to presume innocent but if uh if they are uh, you know they're family members and uh you can you can connect to uh you can connect to family members through the uh ancestry stuff it's kind of the latest and greatest so yeah that's kind of you know i'm gonna like work on that i don't know what i can do but Maybe I can arouse some interest. Maybe we can arouse some interest to get Cookie uh, some justice from these guys. Because, um, you know, I'm going to check. I, I, I didn't do a lot of research on it, but I, my gut tells me, I mean, come on. Those two guys were the last to see her. They got to be the ones. And if they aren't, then, then prove that it's not them. But uh, seems like a no-brainer to... Uh, cold case solved this and then uh, boy there's a whole Kennedy assassination uh, conspiracy connection so anyway 
Darling Cookie, Karen Cupsinet, Cupsinet. March 6th, 1941, November 20th, 1963. Karen Cookie, rest in peace. We'll, uh, hopefully you get justice someday. You had a great career. You had your whole life ahead of you. You were gonna be really successful and it was taken away by, just by selfishness and uh, evil. All right, rest in peace, Cookie. This is the chapel and mausoleum. And You know, I don't want to be negative, but I've got to share of what I'm feeling or seeing. It really, it really smells in here, like mold and, ooh. Hmm, well look at that, that's, uh, that's what they would put the coffins on. That's how they lift them up, put them away. Clarence M. Berry, Sr., 1918 to 2001. Happy Father's Day to the man who taught me what life is all about. Miss you, Daddy, always. Jay. Uh, Michael Joseph Golub. Uh, he lived to be 21. 1996 to 2017. World's greatest dad. Sherman Hill, born in 1926, died in 2016. Obviously loved by many and remembered. Missing you on your birthday. Happy anniversary in heaven. Love your wife, 2020. There's some swans with some babies. I guess we're we're doing the wildlife thing here. Uh, I think I'm three for four on wildlife at the cemetery so far. And on this one, we've got the, uh, the swans and the babies. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up. See you at the next cemetery.